Oh yeah, this is the one. What is going on guys? So today we are checking out Sublab, which is made by FAW, a company that has another plugin called Circle 2, which I'm gonna have to check out seeing that I checked out this one. And I really do like it because it's focused on 808s, bass, and you know different genres like that that require a lot of bass. It's focused straight up on bass. And I can tell you right now, you might like this video a lot, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go right into it. So the link's in the description box, and I'm gonna go right into the demo, and then I'll explain how it works. So the first thing I wanna display is the vectoralness of it. So it does stretch uh, as big as you want and as small as you want. So I'm gonna go as small as possible. Now going into different things here, this my weight that I already saved, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the, how to save it. You just hit the save button and name it whatever you want. So, you know, this one's already named Savage and I saved it and you know, I'm just gonna keep it as is there, but you would just press like save after you name it, it will go into your subs or whatever folder that you want to put it in. But I, I suggest that you use my subs cause that's your subs that you created. Now, there are some things that I want to show you about this particular synth that will blow your mind. I will show you the presets as I go. Uh, but the first thing I wanna show you is the synth engine or the synth layer. So the synth layer here is where you build the synthesized bass. And in this particular aspect, uh, you have an ADSR that you can mess with. Now, keep in mind that you have different tabs. Different tabs are related to the color scheme. So if it's blue, then you have the volume envelope in front of you. So if I was to mess with the volume envelope in real time here, let me go ahead and uh, go right out of that and it's, just let the bass play by itself with the drum line. Uh, you can shape it. You can shape it by messing with the envelope and pulling it up and down, or you can mess with these parameters right here. So attack allows you to mess with the attack, of course. And the decay is like this right here. So if I was messing with the decay, it will make it longer. Then you have the sustain, which will bring that back up and make the, the 808 or sub longer. And then you have the release where you can mess with that and it will play longer as it cuts off. may or may not want that. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring the release back some. And now you see it stops. Uh, you also have a filter tab right here, which is color coded to yellow or orangish, whatever. <laughs> and you know, it has the same ADSR and it also has the amount as well. So you can apply a certain amount of the wet and dry signal that you want in there, which makes this really dope, by the way. And <laughs> then you have pitch, which affects the pitch. And, you know, if you was to do other things to it, let me see, uh, I don't want to mess with it, but. Oh, actually, it's kind of dope. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it allows you to do some, some pretty crazy things to it. And you also can apply an amount to that as well. So it's pretty dope how they figured out how people would want to mess with their bass. They did a really good job with this. And I'm only covered just this section. You can also apply samples in there. So you can drag and drop your samples in there. I don't, I don't feel no need to do that, but you can. You can just drag in, you know, maybe a kick or something like that. There is a library of stuff uh, with Sean Devine, the Roland TR-808, and just many other people that have had stuff in here, but you can import your own samples as well. So I, I really like this plugin for what it's worth. And then you have the patented, and I mean patented as in this is their own tech, uh, which is X sub and it's trademarked, where you can apply what kind of sub harmonics you want in here by going over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you this because this is pretty dope. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> pretty cold-blooded, I say. The next thing I want to talk about is the different waveforms that you have. And the different waveforms are really dope. And it's right here. And also, I want to make sure that you guys know, if you look at the bottom right part of the plugin, you'll see, you know, a little helper. And you also can get more information about it. But I'm going to just go ahead and show you it because I love this plugin. So you have a sine wave. You have a triangle. <laughs> and then you have a saw. Oof. And then you have a square. Ooh. And then, <laughs> those are your waveforms here. And you also can control the octave. So, you know, if it's too... If you drop in your bass while you're creating it, you have flexibility of like reshaping it. So you can do that. Let's demonstrate that. So it's really cold blooded and you also can tune the semitones. And yes, you can double click on a parameter and reset it. So that's really dope. That's a great time saver. Now onto the more fun part is the filter section. The filter section has three different filters in which you can control the resonance and the cutoff. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that. And you can apply as much as you want to the synth engine as well. And that's what this means right here. So if I was to go ahead and take down the amount. Let me go ahead and uh, make this filter a little bit more extravagant. And then you also can apply it to the sample if you was using a sample right here. So that's what that means. So pay attention to the different logos when you're messing with this. And then you have a mixer too as well. Uh, the other filters that you have is of course the low pass filter. And then you have a high pass filter. I already showed you the band pass filter. That's what BP means, but this is the high pass. If you want a high pass on your bass. So you can get some pretty rude basses from Sublab. You also have key tracking. What key tracking does is it distributes the harmonics evenly, no matter what the pitch is when you have a filter on. If you turn it off, then that means when you go in the higher frequencies or higher in the notes or pitch, then that means that that filter won't be as effective as it would be on other parts that have lower frequencies. So it distributes the harmonics evenly. So that's what tracking means. So a very important section right here is the distortion section. So if I was to turn this distortion off in this bass, so let me play it so you can hear it with the bass. Let me go ahead and set that back to a low pass filter. And now I'm gonna turn it off. And here is it with no distortion. Pretty damn plain. But <laughs> this, Distortion area is pretty tough when it comes down to it because you can mess with the low cut and the high cut as well. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that. And you can mess with the high cut so you can pretty much distribute the distortion harmonics the way you want as well, which is pretty good. It's a really nice touch. So you can really deep dive in. And then you have the drive section, of course, less drive, less distortion. More drive, more distortion. And you have tone and gain. So let's hear that. And then you have the mount section where, again, if you pay attention to the logo, you can see that it's for the synth. So if I was to take that away and uh, take away the amount, we have plane. I can go parallel to like 50 to 1%. Anywho, 
so next thing, uh, you also can apply it to the sample as well. I don't have a sample in there. I know, guys. Calm down. But anyways, you can also change the different kind of distortion as well. I know this sounds like a tutorial, man, but I just want to show you. This is really dope. Okay, grunge ain't, ain't, ain't it. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go back to overdrive. And then you also can compress. Maybe it will help if I actually apply the amount, right? Uh, the more exciting thing I really like about this is the fact that you can side change. One of the main things that I really do love about this is the fact that it has some very good visuals to it. Like, damn good. And uh, here is the master section so you can pay attention to how the bass looks like. And then you have the master volume too as well, so you can turn it down and couple it with a limiter. So you have a lot of versatility when you are creating your 808s and bass. Um, one thing I will say I wish it had was an export button. You know, just in case you made an 808 and you just want to use that as a sample or if you want to compile a sample pack. But that's not too big of a deal because if you have something like Edison or if you just freeze the 808 in your doll, you can have a sample of that 808. But, you know, it is what it is. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select this and I'm going to play. I just wanted to go through some of the presets, bef but before I carry on, there was another thing that I almost forgot about. You have a glide section right down here at the bottom left part of the plugin, and you can mess with the curve, the time. You can set it to legato, which I highly recommend that 808s be anyways, or sub bass of any sort or bass of any type should always be like legato. But you know, you have the option to do whatever you want if you want to make your bass is musical or make it some kind of other synthesized sound you have that choice and they also have a set by time or instant or full bar or whatever you want it's just really good so the pros of this i think is really good because they focus on what people would like when they are creating their 808s like having a solid synth area where you can pick out four different waveforms having a great compressor a distortion section that sounds good a strong filter section and it's really really powerful for all the things that you get and then you also have presets just for the people that don't want to make their own 808s but i don't know why you wouldn't if you're gonna get sublab you should be making your own 808s getting your own sound together and not relying on the damn spins 808 one thing i will say is it is pretty cpu intensive i think it is a really strong tool but it also is really powerful on the CPU, but I was screen recording, so I had to keep that in mind, or you had to keep that in mind, that it might be a little different. Also, I have a 2014 laptop, and it's time to upgrade. But other than that, though, the performance of it is really good. Do I, Do I give this the stamp of approval? Approval. Approval. Yeah.